שיר מזמור לבני קורה. Great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. In the city of our God is his holy mountain, beautiful in its height. The exaltation of the whole earth, Mount Zion, the utter north, the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He has made himself known as her high refuge. For see, the kings gathered. They advanced together. They saw. They were astounded. They praised. They fled. They were seized with trembling, writhing as with childbirth, like an east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so we have seen. In the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, that God has secured it forever. Sulla. We have imagined your love, O God, in the midst of your temple. O God, as is your name, so is your praise. To the ends of the earth, your right hand is full of righteousness. Mount Zion will be glad. The daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Go round Zion, make a circuit of her, count her towers, put her defences in your heart. Consider her citadels, that you may recount it to another generation. For this God is our God, for ever and ever. He will be our guide, even unto death. So, so I mean, this this psalm, I suppose, is very much really like the the, the last one we looked at in the in the history of the um, way people have responded to it. Very much sort of devised, doesn't it, between the the kind of exterior, sort of more literal views, and the and the interior. Um, more sort of symbolic ones, and you, you, one of the things that I love, you quote from a sort of slightly later, um, uh, this sort of midrash tehillim, sort of Jewish thing, when when someone is you know, going round the towers and saying, "How many, wow. how many towers? One thousand one hundred and eighty-four, and all, all this kind of thing." I mean, it, it is quite striking, isn't it? These, these sort of differences. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The, the the grandeur of Jerusalem, the potential grandeur of Jerusalem, really mattered to them. That to think about just how great it was going to be. And just as we saw with Psalm 46, uh, it's very much a literal interpretation of the physical city. It's That's what's really important to them, the idea of the city that one day they're going to return to and one day they're going to have their identity sort of really ratified by. And so that's that's a really important uh, um, point in this psalm. And it's been consistent right through the, the interpretation. Whereas with Christians on the whole, you rarely, if ever, to my knowledge, get that sort of view. Either the church, either the the Zion, Jerusalem, is the earthly church, um, or it's the heavenly city, and it, therefore it's a sort of take on it. You know, it's an allegorical take, and it's it's actually not seeing the physical, but something beyond the physical to something with more meaning in it. And uh, in, in it's the church where Jesus Himself. Uh, resides as head and it's the heavenly city where Jesus is king and so there's a certain sort of um overlay that's that comes in the in the Christian readings which you don't obviously find in the Jewish ones yes yes well that sort of leads us on very nicely um to to, to Malcolm's um response to the the poem but but before we 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 go there can I just thank you again for, for joining us um, for these conversations. Um, as you'll know, if you've been following them before, they were based on books that uh, all of us were, were writing during lockdown. And that's when, when we, we started doing these um, uh, little videos. Um, so Malcolm had, had written these um, David's Crown, 150 um, poems responding to the the, the 150 psalms. Um, Sue was completing her massive um, psalms through the centuries, which is three volumes, and um, which are, are looking in in this way of of the, of the different responses that people have made um, to the psalms um, over time. Uh, and uh, mine was the a selection of the the Book of Praises um, illustrated uh, translations of of the psalms. 
um, which incidentally is now, <laughs> you can get signed copies from, from my website, so <laughs> that's a new thing. Um, so anyway, um, Malcolm, I mean, you're very much, I mean, it, it's actually it's slightly different from that. It's not simply the, the New Jerusalem or the Zion. Yeah, it's, it's a slightly yeah, different. But I'm, I'm certainly in that tradition, which I think a Christian, to some degree, has to be. I mean, I entirely, I, I understand the literal, um, those Jewish interpreters, and I honour and respect them because I think it's obviously that faith is place based. It's you know, mm. it's rooted in a promised land. It's gathered into a holy city, and the huge layers of accumulated meaning. That are invested in a place, you know, as we know now, you know, obviously that is still the case, um, you know, with with some consternation and difficulty thereby, but also, of course, immense good and it's in a meaning. I mean, you know, it's a city of peace, but um, Christians don't have that. Their focus is not in that sense a locus, an actual place. Their focus is is Christ, but of Christ is of course seen as in Himself a kind of. New Israel, kind of New Jerusalem. So I was very much aware when I, I mean, I love this psalm. I was responding to to the Coverdale, as as you know, and there are so many, so many um, beautiful. Um, you know, we wait for Thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of Thy temple. And obviously, for a Christian, that the the temple, you know, Christ's body is the temple, and so on, is there. But um, I, I, I love, I love um, that that instruction, which of course is baffling if. If you take it literally and you have to be living in North Norfolk rather than Jerusalem, that verse 11, walk about Zion, go round about her and tell the towers of their old Mark well, her bulk was. So we, that's an invitation which is followed actually by Augustine and many others. We have to understand particularly that, you know, for a long time, until certainly until the invention of printing, when people had memory systems based on, on, on place and image, I think they had a much vaster sense of their own interior life. I mean, Augustine walked about walking, walking, <laughs> talked about walking about the vast fields yeah, and palaces in yeah, his memory. Yes. So I was aware that there was a devotional tradition which saw Jerusalem not not only as the heavenly city that is to come, but as in some sense the citadel of the soul. That that and for me, one of the most important, one of the most resonant lines in the whole Psalter, I think it's in eight, Psalm eighty four, is. <laughs> is blessed is the man in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Yes, yes. And that was very much a, a key for me. So what I did was to, to start, you know, in a sense, by riffing on on the lines in, in, in the psalm and talk about Zion. But pretty much by the second line, I, 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 go, I go beyond location. I say not just the hill of, hill of Zion, but the whole round world. And I, I was probably partly also informed by that that mystical saying that's uh, ascribed, I think, to Nicholas of Cusa, which is that uh, God is is that is that sphere uh, who, whose circumference is nowhere and whose center is everywhere. <laughs> that 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 anywhere you are can be the heart and the center. Um, so that was. I mean, do, do you do you want to hear the poem at this point? Or? Um, let's just before we get there. I think perhaps I mean, it'd be interesting to hear Sue talking about the the, the structure of the of the poems. Yeah. That's quite interesting, yes, really, isn't it? Yes. Well, it is interesting because we've got this phrase, "the city of our God," which comes in in verse one, and then again in verse eight, and it's as if the first that's the first part of the psalm, and it starts with all these sort of epithets about how wonderful seven of them about how wonderful Jerusalem Zion is you know the holy beautiful elevated joy and so on it's got it's yeah. clear, and it's all very sort of still and descriptive and then suddenly in the latter part of that second set of that first section you've got the kings coming you've got this imagined attack on Jerusalem and full of active verbs you know astounded panic flight trembling um, and so on and um Suddenly, you've got the sense of of um, God needing to sort of put this right, and then it it takes up again in the second half. You've got then the descriptions again of Jerusalem, very much in relation to God's protection, but very quiet and meditative and descriptive in the first three verses of the second half, verses nine to eleven. And then suddenly the action again: walk about Zion, go around, count count its towers. You know, right, right, there's, right. there's quite a lot of stillness and movement between the two. Yeah, I think that's you can get something yeah. from that, both Christian and Jewish. You know, it's the same. It's it's about 
reflecting and also and of course it moves from um they that the kings come and then we we reflect and then you you know go and tell god is our god forever and ever so there's a, a movement yeah. of audience yeah. as well i think that yeah. whole thing about the citadel and the bulwarks and the standing within is obviously something that's very much picked up by luther in his readings yes. And, yes. Yeah. and you know a safe stronghold where where god himself as it were become his presence becomes the yes. Zion with the yes. bulwarks and those interpretations I mean mine didn't do this particularly but those interpretations pick up that idea of safety when under attack you know yes. that yes you're in a fortified place and that's yes. part of exactly you know, just yeah. like Psalm 46 yeah, yeah. The, idea of the refuge the refuge comes twice here in this psalm too yeah yes I mean for me I suppose one of the things that I feel is lacking you know, in, in the kind of whole modern worldview and the kind of imminent frame, as Charles Taylor would say, is that is that we don't have a sense of the 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 magnificence and glory and spaciousness, as it were, of the human soul, the human consciousness. Because we have this idea that that everything out there has somehow been turned into a tiny little picture somewhere inside our head and is somehow miniaturized in the pre I mean, that's a very recent idea of perception. People used to think, of course, that the mind went out. Mm. went around the things it perceived and so one of the things we've lost is the sense of of the soul itself as a great city i mean it was there even allegorically you know as far as you know bunyan i mean his the city of mansoul um you know, you know, in his in his second and less well known <laughs> allegory. Yes. Yes. You know, so so uh, that difficult second album. So 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 I, I think I think I wanted to restore some of that, and this psalm seemed like an invitation to do that. And of course, it was written in lockdown, and I think one of the things that happened in lockdown is people realised the length and breadth and height and depth of their own interiority. They were not only in the interiority of their houses. But they were the in the interiority of themselves. Yes, yeah. and you might discover that that's actually a rather more spacious place than you'd realised, and it may even be better furnished than you thought it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think actually that the that though there is this obviously difference between the, the the interior and the exterior, that actually within the psalm there is, as we were in the last one, there is both these things. I mean, the you know one of the just in sort of translating it the. I think Coverdale. Like, does he have the sides of the north? Or it's an odd sort yeah. of. But actually, it's. I yeah. mean, it could be. On you the know, north side, like Yachte Zafon can be the heights of Zephon, which was as a holy mountain, uh, mm -hmm. or, or it can also mean the the extreme north. I mean, and the, the, probably yeah. he would have both these sort of senses. Mm -hmm. And so I I describe it as the utter north because mm -hmm. I think it's you know there is a sense that that the that Zion is, yes, it is this place where God is, but because God is, it's everywhere. And so um, it is, it, I mean, I think, it's, as you say, it's, uh, and that is within us as well as without yeah. us. Well, that's in a sense that my poem has two moves, in a sense, maybe slightly like the the, the psalm has two moves. But um, whereas the, 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 the psalm's move, I think, is, as, as, as Sue has said, is, is, is from the place to the fortress in the battle and then back to the place again. Um, Whereas mine is saying, my first move is, this place is everywhere. And my second move is, and this place is also within you. Yes. I think it's, yeah, that's the thing. Yes. Well, perhaps this would be a, a good time to, to, to hear the poem then. Okay, so the response to Psalm 48, Magnus Dominus. For heaven's king has made the earth his home, not just the hill of Zion, but the whole round world. From anywhere you call to him, he'll come to you and make his dwelling. Hail your God in any language. He replies in your own mother tongue. For now, your soul is the true Zion. And each day you rise already in the city of your God. So mark the towers and turrets and apprise again the beauty of your new abode. Your soul is greater than you ever knew. Walk round its walls, then take the holy road that winds towards its centre, where the new temple of his spirit shines and stands, where Christ himself is there to welcome you. <laughs>